Aloha, it's Kay Pacha with the weekly Pele Report for March 13th of 2024. I am back in the Northern Hemisphere. By golly, I have gone from fall to spring. <laughs> the flowers are blooming. I just had to kind of get this in here before I head down to the river to actually uh, talk to you about the Pele Report because it's just so beautiful. And where's the moon? The moon's in Taurus. Beautiful Mother Earth. And she's there, you know, coming through. She's going to sextile Saturn and conjunct Jupiter today. And then tomorrow, she's going to move on to conjunct Uranus, square Mars before she goes into Gemini, and trines Pluto. Friday, then she comes around and squares Venus and Saturn. Venus is closing in on Saturn. I mean, uh, she's, she's not going to actually conjunct Saturn until next Thursday. But she's coming in there, yeah, moving through Pisces. And by then, uh, on Saturday, uh, the moon moves along and uh, trines Mars when she goes into that Gemini squares the sun conjunct Pluto. This is what I'm going to be talking about. I, I mean, the sun conjunct Neptune. Uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about today. Yeah? I mean, this uh, sun conjunct Neptune is very powerful. It's exact on Sunday, but you're, you know, you're going to feel it all weekend. Um, and uh, that combined, uh, I mean, my other major topic is Mercury conjunct the north node of the moon. That is exact on Monday, but again, you know, you're going to kind of feel that uh, coming in, uh, you know, through the weekend. And uh, that, is, that is actually in square to the moon, yeah? So, uh, sun square moon, I'll read you that Sabian symbol. Uh, she's at 27 degrees, 4 minutes, okay, of Gemini, um, squaring the sun, you know, just before... You know, that sun conjuncts Neptune. I'm going to jump over here because you got to check out these guys. Yes, there they are. <laughs> They're just kind of peeking up here a little bit. There's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is Pisces. <laughs> Enjoying the flowers. Oh my god. It's so great. You got to get it while you can. What's going on over here? We got some other... Look at these guys over here. I mean, it's bursting out all over the place just because what? By golly, on Tuesday, the sun goes into Aries. And next week, we're going to feel a big shift in the energy. So I'm going to just, uh, yeah, let me talk to you about this. Uh, you know, by then, of course, uh, the, the, the moon has moved through Cancer on Sunday, right? Trines Saturn, okay, and uh, comes around and trines the sun Neptune on Tuesday, right? As, you know, moon goes into Leo, sun goes into Aries on the same day. So look out. All right, everybody. If it's not one confluence, it's another. I don't know if you can see that other river coming out there. This confluence is a little more crowded than last week. Whoosh. Yeah, a little change in energy. Um, but let's... There's so much to talk about here. There's so much going on. Um... I've got to look at the bigger context. This hat is too much. Uh, I got to look at the bigger context. We have to. It's not just a weekly report here because it's all. We've got the eclipse season coming, basically. You know, the nodes are in Aries and Libra. Uh, we're going to have a lunar eclipse on the 25th. We're going to have a solar eclipse April 8th. Uh, conjunct Chiron. Uh, and, and this is like setting the stage. There's this preparation going on right now. I'm actually doing a, uh, a live, a free live two-hour webinar on the eclipses. 
Uh, see the link below in the notes. Uh, check it out, March 24th. Uh, you're welcome to join me because, like I say, there is so much going on. And, and because we're at this turning point, this is a turning of the seasons. This is whether you are in the Southern Hemisphere or the Northern Hemisphere, whether it is fall or winter for you, the sun is moving from Pisces into Aries. And I wanted to get a picture of like melting snow, you know, melting snow, the banks of snow going down, turning into water, being washed away. You can see uh, the, the river is full. It's high. Yeah, and, and this is a washing away of the old, of the past, and the sun coming up to join together with Neptune amplifies it a hundred times over because Neptune is very strong, very powerful in, you know, in his own sign, and it has to do with disillusion disillusionment. Neptune wants to show us our illusions. And, you know, he does that by bringing up, uh, guess what? That was a fantasy. That was a dream. That was an illusion. Um, and you need to let it go down that river. This is a lot of time. This is a big letting go. I've talked about this a lot since Saturn has gone into Pisces. It's a three-year period of letting go. And Saturn is grief. Venus coming up to Saturn now. You know, so this is a time like I spoke of last week. It's a very good time to retreat, to go inward, to do our meditations and our breath work and spend time in nature, connecting with the divine, both within ourselves and without, because there is this great mix and of course, it's going to happen more or less to different people in different evolutionary stages, depending upon their relationship to spirit, depending upon their relationship, okay, to nature, the divine. And what I'm talking about here is that it's both a blessing and a curse, okay? It is both kind of a letting go but it's also a time to receive downloads. Neptune rules that crown chakra. This is, all, you know, this is a time of opening, dreaming, pay attention to your dreams, okay? But you know, the more that you can isolate, the more that you can seclude, the more that you can remove yourself from the hustle and bustle and the daily activities and the, the noise and the distractions okay, of this mundane world, uh, you know, I'm going to say this is like the week. <laughs> Not the last chance, <laughs> but when that sun goes into Aries next week, the action's going to start. Moon's going to go into Leo. You know, we're going to be going from water, ether, spirit, meditation, reflection, even sorrow, sometimes reflection is depression. Okay, there's grief with letting go. There is, you know, whether it's something that, you know, you really wanted or if it's something that you've just been putting up with or something that's needed to go for a long time or, you know, is being taken away from you, you know, with your desire or not, right? This this releasing, you know, is a time of really reflecting on the past, on what brought it on, what brought you here to where you are. And it's almost that that is a necessary part of the seeding of a new cycle, right? Aries is a new beginning. It's like we're at the gate. I got the, I got the image of... Uh, you're going to a concert, you know, and you got to pay your ticket, <laughs> you know, and then you go through those little, you know, those little bars, you know, that count who's going in. I mean, this is like we're at this gate 
the starting gate, okay? And we got to pay. You know, we got we to gotta let go of something in order to move on, in order to move forward. If there's advice that we would want to, you know, uh, put forward, I, the other image that I got is a rodeo, you know, where the horse comes back, you know, just banging out. You know, they, they open the gate and, you know, here comes the cowboy, like riding the, the, you know, the, bron the bucking bronco. It's like, as, you know, as much as is possible, with Jupiter coming up to Uranus, with Mars still in Aquarius, there can be a tendency to jump the gun. And I'm uncomfortable or I'm grieving. I want to latch on to, I want to jump on to, I want to, you know, get out of here. I want to escape, you know, my, my, my sorrow or my reflection or my meditation. You know, I gotta, I gotta keep up, you know, or life is gonna pass me by or blah, 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 blah. I mean, so many thoughts, fears, needs can come into, you know, play at this particular turning point, right? So it's it's like you don't want to get lost in the past. You know, you don't want you want to prepare. It's like the seed must die that it is born again. This is springtime. The seeds die and when Aries and Taurus comes, I will say with the eclipses coming, we've got some work to do. Yeah? These eclipses are going to be happening, you know, over this next month with the sun in Aries, uh, you know, moon transiting through Libra, full moon, lunar eclipse, total solar eclipse, okay, coming up in Aries, conjunct Chiron. And, you know, a lot of this has to do with healing our innermost warrior self. And it can precipitate a crisis. And we can be dealing with crisis now, particularly in our relationships, but also, you know, having to do with some finances, having to do with a lot of pressure. I want to read to you the Sabian symbol now for the moon square the sun that's coming up this weekend, right? I mean, it's not always a happy sight. <laughs> And this is through bankruptcy. Society gives to an overburdened individual the opportunity to begin again. The keynote is a release from unbearable pressures, freeing one for new tasks. This symbol can easily be misinterpreted. For while it obviously has a connotation of failure, <laughs> it nevertheless depicts a particular state of the complex relationship of an individual to his community. The bankruptcy proceedings mentioned here should not be construed as referring to a fraudulent type of bankruptcy. At least in the United States, bankruptcy does not imply a moral condemnation. Rather, it means that individual failure cannot be separated from the health of the community, the family, the relationships, the friends. The special nature of the whole is implied in the failure of the part to perform adequately under particularly harsh economic conditions. A society which enthrones the principle of ruthless competition must also develop mechanisms to exteriorize the principle of compassion. This compassion, the latter, was at first emphasized by Northern Buddhism and soon after by Christianity. The concept of atonement is directly related to that 
of release from unbearable economic pressures in bankruptcy. In this stage, we have seen the emergence of a new consciousness based on leaving behind the externals of biopsychic living in its at least relatively wild and exuberant aspect. Here we have another kind of leaving behind. In capital letters, a liberation from the past. What I've been experiencing personally, and I believe it you know, can be coming through collectively, is this walking in two worlds, the world of the material, dense, third dimensional reality, and the higher, etheric, less dense, spiritual reality. And as we focus and attend to our daily tasks and our finances and, you know, our emotional dramatic relationships and all of this, you know, everything that's going on right here, we cannot hear or tune in to that subtle spirit energy of the plants, animals, angels, those on the other side. There's so many dimensions. There's so much more to life and to our reality. So what we really want to do is take this, like I say, this last week, this time, and this bankruptcy may be felt economically, but it may also be a bankruptcy of the heart. It may be a bankruptcy of your plans. It may be just that there's been so much pressure to perform to succeed, to survive, to prove yourself, to be responsible, to stand up, and to just like, you know, it's just like, it is really challenging at this time. There's so much insecurity happening, and ultimate security is found within our own self. And this is where Aries comes in, this is where healing the self comes in. And, you know, it just really uh, has a lot to do, okay, with owning. Owning our own inner need. And if that means surrendering to some kind of failure and reflecting on the faults, the weaknesses, the wounds that got us into situations that were too big for us, something that we could not handle, then it's time to shrink. Yeah, and maybe it, it, this can be a time of really, I, the other image that I got was, you know how when you're, uh, you're making brown rice, you know, you put it in the sieve and you run water, you know, over the rice, you know, to clean it, to wash it. Yeah, this could be with veggies or whatever, you know, but I just thought of rice for some reason. It's kind of little, you know, tiny little kernels and like we're little seeds and, we, and we're getting washed. And, you know, it may be uncomfortable and it may be hard. Yeah, that snake shedding its skin or the, you know, the apple getting washed off and the dirt, you know, I, I don't know. It's just... It's hard to let go of things that have got us here as far, you know, to where we are. And to come into self-reliance. This is Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus. The moon is setting off in this new phase. The sun's moving into Aries. Which brings me to Mercury conjunct the North Node a very, very powerful time period. And I want to look at these other two Sabian symbols. I'm not going to read, uh, you know, both of them, but just give you the something to meditate on because it's of a very positive note, right? Mercury conjunct, okay, that north node is happening at the 16th degree of Aries. 
nature spirits are seen at work in the light of sunset. Pisces is like the sunset, but the nature spirits are working for us, with us. Maybe invisibly, maybe you are more tuned in or tapped into, yeah, them and their work. Attunement to the potency of invisible forces of nature. I mean, this is the beauty of that Sun conjunct Neptune, where we can pierce, we can see into other <clears throat> super sensible worlds and take comfort. That's what the mantra is about today, being called home. <laughs> Let me talk about the mantra a little bit after this last one, <clears throat> because it is beautiful. The Sun conjunct Neptune <clears throat> is at the 28th degree of Pisces. A fertile garden under the full moon reveals a variety of full-grown vegetables. <laughs> the full satisfaction of the individual's basic needs. So we may be getting stripped. <clears throat> there may be disillusionment. <clears throat> there may be grief and sorrow, but <clears throat> our basic needs are filled by spirit, faith, <clears throat> hope, trust in spirit <clears throat> is going to really bring us through to be, to be all right alone, to be all right within, maybe to be all right broke, <laughs> or to be all right knowing that we are cared for, that there is a tapestry of life there is the web of life, and we're woven into it. This is the beauty that the Sun conjunct Neptune can bring us. I could read that whole thing because it's just so beautiful, but you know. Anyway, so the mantra for today. The image, the other image that I got, <clears throat> you know, is like, in some ways, I mean, when I was a kid, <laughs> a long time ago, <laughs> I used to play football, either football or baseball, but we would like play it every day after school. All the kids in the neighborhood, you know, would get together. Some of us had shoulder pads and helmets. I mean, it got serious, right? <laughs> you know, boom, boom, you know, we're out there. And, and then what would, you know, what would happen? ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling Mom would ring the bell for dinner. And we'd throw up our hands and go, ah, game's over. I got to go home. <laughs> but what's the beauty part of that? There is a full spread, <clears throat> a full table of nourishment from the earth, of dinner. So this, you know, this rising up, you know, this letting go of the game letting go of the action, you know, and, and we can be all even having a good time, you know, and maybe we're not bankrupt, you know, maybe things are going, you know, pretty darn good, but still, we're getting called to a bigger game, a higher frequency. I always say this is, you know, we don't return back <clears throat> to where we were. It's a spiral. I wore my spiral necklace today, <laughs> right? Yeah, baby, the Fibonacci series. So, you know, <clears throat> we're not where we were a year ago. I mean, we could look at what started a year ago, but you know, it's, you know we are now at the next level. <clears throat> so it's time to say goodbye to one game and then go into this eclipse season. Kind of let go of this Libra, of the other, you know, of, you know, the, the mirrors and the reflections and the, 
you know, the feedback and the judgments and the criticism or the praise and the adoration. I, le I mean, it's really time. This inner work can begin now. And you know, Mars is coming into Pisces. Venus is coming up to Saturn. You know, uh, the, the eclipses are coming. And the north node in Aries, Mercury, thinking about, right, my healing, thinking about my wounds, and really looking at, yeah, taking the microscope, and really looking at, you know, what do I need to work on? What's my inner work? And ultimately, it's up to each and every one of us. Counselors can help. Therapists can help. But ultimately, it's up to us to go in, to reflect, to slow down, to feel, even if it's anger, frustration, irritability, you know, even the negative feelings. But like, you know, psh, like bring this all up. And this is growth. Right? This is the full-grown vegetables <laughs> in the garden. Right? You know, nature spirits helping to bring full growth. So the mantra for this week, yeah, you know, is really, <clears throat> I'm sorry I can't stay and play as I'm being called back home. But I will play another day when I'm more fully grown. If it's not one game, it's another. If it's not one job, it's another. If it's not one relationship, it's another. If it's not one identity, it's another. If it's not one life, it's another. I mean, you know, it, the beat goes on and it's like breathing. So I encourage you, take this week, go back home, have your dinner, talk with spirit, and you will be more fully grown, you will be more prepared, you will be ready for that sun to burst into Aries, right? And have, I mean, the pace is going to pick up. The action is going to pick up. It's going to, things are going to, things are going to be shifting. Yeah. So, enough for now. One more time. Oh, the song, I, I, I got two songs. Uh, I think I've used uh, this other one, you know, um, this song is over. This song is over. It's all behind me. I should have known it. No hope to find me. I, I really like that one. I think I've used it before though. Because um, it's I sing my song to the wide open spaces. <laughs> and I know I've been there before. <laughs> the other one is... I, I don't want to get too religious or, you know, spiritual or, you know, talk about, you know, God too much. I know it's a turnoff for a lot of people. This is an old song. It's called Day by Day. And it talks, Dear Lord, three things I pray to see thee more clearly, nothing more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Day by day, day by day, day by day. So, take your choice, take your pick, depending on what mood you're in for the who, or I don't even know who did day by day. I hope I can find it. <laughs> it's so freaking old. I don't even know if you've heard of it before, but <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, that's the songs. Songs for this week. <clears throat> I'm sorry I can't stay and play as I'm being called back home. But I will play another day when I'm more fully grown. 
May you go in, may you go up, may you release, may you surrender, may you become more fully grown into the sun, your identity, your solar purpose, who you really are. This is the promise of Sun Neptune at the end of Pisces. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.